Conservatives <laughs> cause jobs to be lost. They're Republicans. Uh, so let's move on to some tweets. Yay! So, Rod, Roger Stone. We're starting with Roger Stone. Who says, yeah, New Jersey is in play for real Donald Trump. Could Joe Biden draw a crowd like this? He says, as he shows a picture of what looks like the Copacabana Beach at Rio de Janeiro. That doesn't... With the, is with that, the tropical mountains in the background. So that's not New Jersey. <laughs> that is not New Jersey. No, that is that is Rio. That's actually a Rod Stewart concert from 1994, I think it was. And uh, so I retweeted that and pointed out that it was uh, not, in fact, New Jersey. Because, like, you know, tropical mountains are not a thing that exists in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And uh, then this guy, Bass Riff, responded with, I'm an atheist and I spent time in Canada during COVID. Really, dude, stay out of our politics. You have no ground to stand on. The next generation of atheists are rejecting leftist insanity. You're like, I didn't what? realize that... Uh, that me... Donald Trump was a leftist? Well, like, I didn't realize that pointing <laughs> out that that's not New Jersey was like the super deep political issue. Like, Appa I'm... apparently it is. Apparently it is. Um, now, this guy clarified that, like, by this tweet, what he meant was, um, like, our politics, like, Canadian politics suck even worse than American ones. So, like, I have no ground to stand on. That's what he meant by that. That's and still stupid. He's like, still stupid. Mm. He, he should feel bad for being stupid. Yeah. I mean, he eventually deleted this tweet and all the other ones that, like, in the thread where he had been arguing with people about it. So I guess he does feel bad for being that stupid. Like, I... It, he He's the dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, he am the dumb he am the dumb speaking of which we might be having sir sick on with us at some point i'm in negotiations with that in negotiations yeah not it's really a very very formal way to uh to describe it now nah, he he contacted me on twitter and i was like mm, this is a bad place to contact me why don't you email me and uh yeah so we're we're working we're working some shit out fair enough don't know when it'll happen, but uh, yeah. Tomorrow. I know, I know there have been a lot of people that have been asking me for that. And uh, it, actually, that was uh, the fastest you have ever responded to one of my private messages when it was when I was like, <laughs> hey, Sir Sick might be willing to join us on Twitch tweets at some point. Would you be OK with that? And like immediately within like half a second, you were like, yes. Yeah, because I was cooking. Because I was cooking breakfast, and my phone was my entertainment. Yeah, but I message you all the damn time, and I always like it's always like <laughs> half an hour before you respond to me, and that time it was like half a second. So I was like, "Whoa, Cirrus is uh, like really enthusiastic about this." He saw Sir Sick and was like, "Yeah." It's because I was cooking sick bacon, mm -hmm. and apparently yeah, also sure. pizza. Sure. Look, my the the breakfast for me was apparently a slice of pizza, two things of bacon, eggs covered in uh, three meat queso, and baked potatoes. Uh, Scott Dillahunt says, "Is there enough whiskey in Ontario to support him? I sh uh, should I send some maple whiskey? Um, just don't send Crown Royal because that shit's garbage." I don't know, like, it's it's Canadian whiskey, and it's supposedly St our good shit, but, like, no, it's garbage. Don't, don't, no, Crown Royal is bad. Don't drink Stoff Crown Royal. Stoff says, uh, suppose, so does that mean we can canonize Sir Sick and fan art? Yes. I mean, I, I don't think there's any way around it at that point. We already got, like, hyper so, fempologia. So here's the, here's the question, though. Does my putting my face over top of the fan art that showed up in your video that I plagiarized count for the canon? Canonically, you have my tits. Canonically, I, I have your tits. Okay, there we go. That I guess. And Olivia Williams came back just in time to hear us say, "Canonically, I have your tits." Uh, Plow King says, "Canadian Club." No, that's the uh, that's the rail version of Crown Royal. So also no, Canadian whiskey is just not good. Okay, I said it. I'm a Canadian. Ooh. I'm okay admitting that Canadian whiskey is shit. Uh, Rosina says, I don't have enough data to add Sir Sick to my, to my BL fantasies. And Alex says, wait, that's not how lower works. Yes, it is. 
Cornea says, I always draw Sir Sick as a dom. So is Sir Sick going to be dominating both of us? Do we do we have to call him Daddy? I I guess. <laughs> Daddy Whiskey. <laughs> um. Yeah, I am the Walrus says all fan art is canon. Yeah, I'm I'm aware that that is Cirrus's policy. All fan art is canon, and that that's why I was asking about like me sticking my face on the fan art. Now, of course, the person who made that stuck my Rhino avatar face on top of it, so that did become canon. But like, does my Rhino Rhino avatar, as opposed to my human Rhino avatar, also become canon? Because I did that, but it wasn't technically fan art; it was just plagiarism. I don't know. I mean, mimicry, something, something, highest form of flattery. Something like that. I don't know. If what mimicry is the highest form of flattery, then plagiarism is like worship, I guess. So what's funny is uh, YouTube, you know how YouTube gives you that uh, comparison? Like, in comparison to the last nine videos, this one is like, for how long it's been published, it's like number three in view count. Uh, so like, my plagiarizing you was like consistently number four. So it's like one of my better performing videos was just i stole a video from you and it's fully monetized and everything too so yep so thanks for hey, that hey, you have to go you have to go full hog with it if you're going to be james summerton for halloween you need to do it just full power See, i i messaged you before i did that i was just like i think this would be a funny thing i'm not going to do it but i think it would be funny and then you were like do it so i did yep. oh no i i wholly endorse trolling of that uh of that variety I mean, we stream enough of the same shit to the same channels anyway, so whatever. Yeah, at this point, there is there is no difference. <laughs> sure. I'm also, I'm also sad that like that my critique of the James Summerton thing is also one of the better performing videos on my channel. Period. It's just because the name James Summerton is there. I I guess it just feels weird and wrong. It's like that. That's that's where like the. <laughs> So like the, there was a split second where, like, when he posted the suicide note that we were all like, oh, maybe this is a serious thing. We're like, mm, maybe I shouldn't have made a video where I called him an empty husk of a human being. No, he, he deserves it. And then it. it's like, nope, nope, he he posted his dick and balls while, while people thought he had committed suicide. So like, no, fuck him. Yep. It's just really, really frustrating because, like, you you can't root for him. Diehard anime you... otaku says in Angel Dust voice, "Full hog," you say. <laughs> Full hog. Oh, Angel Dust is great. He is. So I've been uh, I've been trying to convince Rory, my oldest child, um, who has seen Has Been Hotel and loves the music, and we have listened to the album together several times. I've been trying to convince them to do a duet with me for uh, uh, Loser Baby. Mm -hmm. um, but they can't... So anytime like we're listening to the album, they, like, they'll be singing out all the lyrics at full blast, but then there are key moments where they like suddenly are really, really quiet. And I'm like, I know you know those words. Why are you quiet? Like, it's Both just a song. dig, suck, and howl? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, I'm like, <laughs> we need to do that as a duet. But then they're like... Yeah, I, like, I'm like, you, you need to, <laughs> like, they, they don't want to uh, call themselves a coked up dick second hoe in front of their dad, which is like, yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. I find it amusing. And I, I kind of <laughs> rib them. But that's actually how I found out that they didn't know what a power bottom was. Because, like, when singing that song, they sang out the lyrics, I'm a power bottom at rock bottom at full volume. And it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, anytime it's anything like sexual or like bad words or whatever, you get really, really quiet. But you said power bottom at full volume there. Do you know what a power bottom is? <laughs> They're like, no. Like, okay. You're a power bottom at rock bottom. Maybe that's fine by me. No, the coked up dick second hoe is fine by me. <laughs> T Time says it wasn't even his dick and balls. He plagiarized that too. I thought so. I when I was looking down people, the threads, people, people who were had reverse image searching it. Yeah, yeah. The people who were reverse image image searching it, it seemed like they I learned that from my it. video. <laughs> <For me. laughs> 
<laughs> they reverse image search it and couldn't find it anywhere, so unfortunately it might actually be his dick and balls was what I saw. Yeah, you know, my dick and balls are probably out there somewhere. It's like, I, I've posted enough stuff that I've had to censor myself. Like, when you use the blur function in uh, Photoshop or Premiere or whatever, it's not destructive. You can reverse it, so it's possible that someone out there has done that, and my dick and balls are out there. Just saying. Just, just saying? <laughs> just in case anybody is wondering. Anyway, back to the tweets. <laughs> Colin Rugg, who I don't know, but I think he's a right-wing grifter type person. Um, I, I chose this for no other reason than to remind everybody that Lauren Handy is an anti-abortion activist whose last name is Handy. Wait, Lauren. So hold on. I heard Lauren Handy just sounds like you're saying Lauren Bober. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Absolutely. This is Lauren Handy. If you do a Handy, you don't need an abortion, right? Um... Oh, Die Hard says, I'm trying to convince a non-binary friend of mine to be Alistair. They would be the uh, the tiniest radio demon. Um, I, it, it's canonical that Alistair is asexual. Yep. And a cannibal. And a cannibal, yeah. So here's the thing, though. Like, there's so much goddamn lore in that show. And, like, I... I kind of hyperfixated on it for a while. So like, yeah. I started learning all this shit about it that, like, is not even apparent in the show itself. No, it's just all the stuff that Vibzy put in the background. Or, or like, like just outside. has said on a live stream at some point. And one of the things was, like, um, when Rosie says, like, oh, you, you're, you're a real ace in the hole or whatever. I was like, and then he was like, I'm a what now? I was like, okay, what, <laughs> what does, like, what does the phrase ace in the hole mean to most people? Because, like... That sounds like close to two phrases, but neither one really quite fits. And then there was this like long thread on Reddit where like someone was like, yeah, no, it's because he's literally an ace and having an ace in the hole is a reference to like this old movie where it's like you, you have this like powerful secret weapon or whatever. So it's like a double entendre, meaning he is both ace and he's got this he's secret, also a secret weapon. weapon thing going on. Um. And then, like, the people in the thread were like, oh, you LGBTQ people gotta shove your shit in everywhere you find. And it was like, no, the person who created it has been Hotel, Hotel has literally confirmed that Alistair is an ace, and that line was a reference to that. So, like, that's not us shoving shit in there. That's just the creator of the show saying, yes, that's what I meant when I wrote that line. Um, but, like, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where like I keep learning all this stuff about it, and like I've I've now watched the entire of of the um, the spinoff show, the uh, oh, hell, hell, of a boss? hell of a boss, yeah, and yeah. I I'm at the point where like I so I feel like I like the story of Hell of a Boss more, but I like the music of Has Been more. Yeah, Hell of a Boss was one. Of, okay, so. It's one of those things where it's like Hell of a Boss was just their independent thing that they're doing on their own. They don't have a big studio behind them. Mm. And so like part of me want like when you take that into consideration, I'm not sure that I dislike it, but it's not something like if Hell of a Boss was on Amazon Prime, I probably wouldn't watch it. Mm. But because it's related to this other thing that I'm already hyper fixated on because of my neuro spiciness. <laughs> Then, you know, I'm I'm no, fine I with can, it. Whatever, I can understand that. I think for me though, I I really really enjoy the story of Hell of a Boss, especially seeing like. So, so uh, my favorite moment in the whole show was when uh, like so he's got the daughter <laughs> Luna who is the uh, Hellhound yeah. who is obviously yeah, a, a obviously a furry. Oh wait, no, sorry. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Stolas' daughter, the owl yeah, no, daughter. No, no. no, I'm talking about the wolf girl. She's yeah. obviously made to appeal to the furries. And at one point they like make an overt reference to that. And they're like, who would be like sexually attracted to that, you fucking perverts? And then they all like look directly into the camera <laughs> for like two seconds. And, like, I, I enjoyed that. I think so I like Hell of a Boss a lot. Because characters like Asmodeus and Stolas are really, really fun to watch on screen. Mm -hmm. Just those characters that go like, 
there's this one persona that they have to give out to everyone because they are overlords or not they're not overlords they're sins at least uh, as modi is a sin and yeah. then the actual like secondary thing they're allowed to give to you know blitzo and everyone else i like that's no, blitz I like was silent um, Fuck him. <laughs> no but i i oh what was i gonna say um what were you saying yeah i don't know whatever but it's like because it's a, like an independent thing i have to give it a little bit of extra like leeway for like okay it's not great in this in this perception but that's because he didn't have millions of dollars behind it it was just a passion project um but like one of the things i don't like is that like a lot of the lore is like behind these live streams that the creator has done where she's just mm -hmm. like dumped information in these live streams and if you're not familiar with the live streams you're not going to pick up on it necessarily and so yeah, that that kind, that. that kind of annoys me because I don't want to watch multiple three hour live streams. I say in my two hour live stream about making fun of twits or on Twitter. You even making fun of twits who tweet? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I forget what I was going to say. But anyway, so uh, this uh, Lauren Handley was sentenced or Handy was sentenced to five years in prison for blockading a Washington abortion clinic. Um, so after she was indicted when the police searched her home, they found a bunch of fetuses in her fridge. What? Because she, like, stole them from abortion clinics. And What uh, does she think she's going to do with them? So here's the thing. The pro-life people are kind of, like, they were treating her being sent to prison as, like, she's a martyr for this or whatever. But it's like, she was stealing dead babies from a abortion clinic. Does she think she's a necromancer? So Fennec is saying, wasn't the story from a few years ago? Yeah, no, the, like, the story broke a few years ago, but this is, um, like, it was only recently that she was actually sentenced to prison time. Um, and yeah, but, like, people are, like, showing pictures of the fetuses being, like, these were, like, fully formed babies who, like, were probably executed after birth. It's like, no, they were just fetuses that she stole and kept in her fridge and like a crazy person and then people are treating her like a martyr because she kept fetuses in her fridge it's, it's creepy as fuck but also her last yeah. name is handy so like if you stuck to the handy you wouldn't need the abortion right uh, <laughs> it's so funny anyway ed Lattimore says something a lot of men don't like to admit all of your hobbies all of your hobbies and ambitions are to attract women nature doesn't care how much personal fulfillment you get from them these things are cool but they're a coincidental positive externality to the prime objective to keep the species going so my love of playing single player video games with nobody watching me and nobody in the room with me is to attract women by that same token uh, my love of Magic the Gathering is to attract women. Now, it just so happens that playing Magic the Gathering on stream uh, with Saki is one of the things that caused us to grow close. And yeah, then playing so World of Warcraft. In your and... case, it works, but I play Hollow Knight yeah, no. over and over and over and over and over and over and over a fucking again because apparently I have autism and I, I have my interests that I like and I like this one thing and I do that one thing over and over again and no other video game can catch my attention but like I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours in Hollow Knight and doing randomizers in Hollow Knight and doing the pantheons of Hollow Knight when you connected to our Zoom call today I was playing Hollow Knight um, and it's it's a one player game yeah. And my partner is not interested in it whatsoever, aside from the fact that she is interested in my mental health and it's okay. And so will like encourage me to do things for myself for relaxation. Like that's the extent of her interest in it is I just want you to have a thing that you do to unwind. And that is apparently specifically to attract women, even though she has no interest in it whatsoever. Well, of course it's only to attract women, Rhino. Deal, Jules why, says, why stream, it be? stream Hollow Knight. Everybody's asking for me to stream. Okay, I will stream it if you guys really want me to, but, like, nobody watches it when I stream it, because I have done it on occasion. Um, I've also been playing uh, Star Wars Squadrons recently, and um, I kind of want to get 
a joystick for it, but it would need to be like one of the expensive ones because I like I can't deal with shit inputs. Wait, and you don't have a joystick. Are you talking about a controller or like no a proper joystick? Because the controls for it on a controller are not great. I like keyboard and mouse would be garbage for that game. Um, but yeah, no, no, yeah, um, I. So I, I actually have experience flying planes for real. And so, like, there's a part of me that's like, I would want to get, like, not just a joystick, but a joystick with the pedals and everything so that, like, I can map it to be, like, as it would be in a real plane. Mm -hmm. It's like, that, that was actually one of the things that my, like, multiple instructors told me is that I was a natural when it came to controlling the plane with the rudder. Because, like, because... You turn you turn left and right with the rudder, and then you uh, like the your roll is done with. Um, so the plane I learned in was a um, uh, DA twenty, um, which is like this little tiny two seat plane, and you do have a joystick. It wasn't like the the steering wheel thing in the middle, um, and so like so you turn the plane side to, like left and right with your feet, and then like when you turn the wheel that just rolls the plane. And so you have to kind of coordinate your, your roll it. Like, so if you're turning right, you roll it a little bit to the right and you use your foot to actually turn right. And that just felt natural to me. And all of my instructors were like, yeah, no, you're like, that's, that's a thing that you're just good at. Most people have to practice at that. And I like, that's a difficult thing for them to master, but you just kind of did it. So I feel like if like, if I were to get like the full setup like that, that would cost several hundred dollars that that would be better for me. Cause like the, the controller is garbage. Cause like the throttle is on the same thing that controls the yaw. And I don't know, it, like, I don't know if it would be worth the investment, but like maybe that's a whole category of games I could get into. Microsoft flight simulator likes. Yeah, no, I like, I, I've tried fl flight simulator. Like it's one thing when you're actually flying a plane and you're actually in the air over the thing. And it's like, yeah, you don't really have much to do, but it's okay because like you're there. Um, yeah, it's not called a wheel. It's a yoke. Yes. I knew that. I just couldn't, uh, think of the word at the moment. Thank you, Drew. Um, yeah. So like flight simulator, I can't do because it's, it's, it's just boring because it's just screens or whatever. Like maybe it's different if you've never actually flown a plane, or if you're practicing for flying a real plane, like if you get the combination of it, but like it, just, it doesn't replace the feeling. Whereas like something like something that's very obviously a video game I could do because it, like, you know it's, it's would... more action packed and I can crash into shit and it doesn't matter. You know, what would be fun uh, if you used a, if you used a, like an actual joystick setup and played Star Fox 64's first person mode with it. <laughs> oh, that would probably be garbage. Fine. Oh, fine. Star, Star Fox 64. I love that game. That was so much fun. I had, Do I need a to get barrel a roll. Yeah, actually, it's more of an aileron roll. <laughs> but no, I, I need to get a copy of that game for my N64. I also need to get the two uh, things I need to upscale it properly so it doesn't look like I'm looking at sludge. Yeah. Anyway. Well, one, one day I'll get those. Anyway, that's another hobby that uh, definitely doesn't get me the puss. Sure it does. You just don't know it yet. No, I'm pretty sure my partner that would just be another thing that I do on my own ton wine rather than something that would be attractive to her. Now, I'm pretty sure this guy was probably thinking of things like playing guitar because that is something. If I pick up my car, my guitar and start strumming, she kind of looks at me and is like, "Ooh." <laughs> and so, like, yeah, I get that. I get that music is sexy or whatever, and like shared interests are fun. But, um, yeah, no, sometimes your interests are just because it's something that interests you, not because you want sex. If the only reason that you have interests is for the sole purpose of getting sex, I'd consider that a bit of a red flag. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Steel Jewels says, looks at you like, ooh, 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 ooh. which I can get with my button. Ooh, ooh. I can make sure say ooh, ooh anytime I want. Yeah, you can. I'm, I understand that. Shut the fuck and up. I mean, I still have this one on. So I was thinking maybe you would want to um, do a sex with me. So, yeah. Jesus Christ. 
I only I only play Hollow Knight because I want someone to do a sex with me. <laughs> no, Rhino, don't you understand? You're going to have sex with everyone here. Because I'm going to have sex with everyone! <laughs> uh, as long as everybody's consenting adult and my partner is okay with it, then sure, I'll have sex with everybody in my audience. Don't expect it to be good the entire time. <laughs> I only have so much to ever. give. You're uh, not as good as you once was, but you're as good once as you ever was. So Eric Hoven says, I am a Christian. You can ridicule me. You can reject me. You can hate me, but you cannot change my mind. That's not. Then you're just an idiot. That's not the own you think it is. That's that's just you being a stubborn idiot. Like you like you can change my mind. You can change my mind about the existence of God. You just need to provide me with sufficient evidence. <sighs> I I don't understand. This is this. These are the same people that say that like. Okay. Science I'll, I'll let is... you deal with this one. I gotta pee. Fair enough. These are the same people that say that, like, science is bad because it can change. Like, science's ability to... Uh, using the scientific method, using peer review, being able to have people fact-check you, being able to have people try to replicate your data, that's a bad thing because it means that if science, insofar as it can say anything, says something once, uh, suddenly it having to say something different later as more evidence comes out, that's a bad thing. I, I don't understand that. Like, <sighs> these are the people that put a high amount of value on being steadfast in your beliefs, even when your beliefs are very, very fucking wrong. .rtms says, oh, you want evidence? Well, how about all of this obvious BS that's been debunked and you hear it a thousand times? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Van Briggs, thank you for the all-wall. I, I, I will do an all-wall. Normally, I wouldn't do all of the redeems whenever I'm in the middle of a collab, but he's pissing, so... Uh, Silver, Drag uh, Silver Dragon Sorcerer says, learning new information is bad. It is. Learning new information, it's awful. It feels like uh, garbage. Why would you ever want to learn new information when you could just sit with the same information you've always had and just use it and only it forever? That sounds way more better. Almost like a conversation we were having earlier. Witch Night Melody, thank you for giving your points, friend. Da, da, da. You fucking degen. Don't forget the glug glug. I will not forget the glug glug. I, I will do so. Also, what's funny is that I, I peeled a 3D pl uh, printed object off of my build plate uh, while Rhino went to the restroom. So I can't lean over to the 3D printer and put the build plate back where it's supposed to go because that takes me really far away from the mic until he gets back. So now I'm just sitting here awkwardly holding a 3D printed build plate, just waiting for the moment where I'm allowed to put it back where it goes. If you're going to be a Lego nerd, spell scales correct? What are you to... What, what is that word stuff? What is that word? Rhino sounded like uh, scales from Lego Ninja. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, OBS is being OBS, of course. That's why I'm probably going to do a full computer reset after this and and get some editing done and spend some time with Saki because she needs you, a she needs a person. You glitching out on me? Yes, I am the entire time. Oh, you're okay. here! I can finally put my bill plate back. Case Orbs says, if women feel so unsafe at night, why do they vote uh, vote to illegally import a massive amount of men from cultures that don't respect women? So I'm going to say, so taking this at face value, which you absolutely should not, but uh, if you take it at face value and assume that he is correct in what he's saying, what does that say about you? Women are so afraid of you that they're willing to instead deal with a society of men. Like, I assume this is an anti-Islamic thing. I, where, I think like, it's oh, also Mexicans. You know, okay. You know, they just conflate all brown people and they see brown, they think Islam. Yeah, but they're mostly Catholic. Yeah, but the, if Catholics don't respect women. Christians don't respect women. A lot of religions don't respect women. Yeah, fair. But, like, you take it at face value. I think he's trying to talk about Islam. 
because like that's that's one of the big things is like if you let too many immigrants into the country then islam takes over and like that that's propaganda that comes to us from europe that like usually the american propaganda goes elsewhere but that's that's one that we have uh that the states have imported from europe where it's basically just like brown equals islam mm, and is, islam doesn't treat women very well which it absolutely does not but like if the women are willing to deal with a culture where they are forced to wear hijabs and deal with spousal abuse and they would take that over you existing, then what's that say about you? If you're the lesser of two evils here, then maybe, maybe you're a bit of a problem. Yeah. Okay, someone did a hat, so I gotta... I guess you the, have to wear a hat now. Steal the communist hat from my boss. Oh, Which, Rhino that's, comrade. That's my uh my the dumpling thing back here. That was a uh, Christmas present to me from one of my uh one of my partner's kids and uh she calls it my boss. Oh. Cuz she she sits over my shoulder and watches me while I work. And she gets to tell me what to do. So that's my boss. <laughs> uh, but yeah. No. Man. If, Kevin Sorbo depresses me. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where, like, like my partner, for instance, if I had never come into her life, she would have gone to her grave thinking Kevin Sorbo was kind of an okay guy who played Hercules once. Because, like, outside of our weird online area that we exist in, Nobody cares what Kevin Sorbo has to say, so nobody's really paying attention to what he's doing. So they just know him as that guy that played Hercules in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's 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 a weird space that we occupy. Where we get to actually know about the the dumb shit that he's saying all the time because we're yeah. some of the only people to pay attention to it. Mark Fernkoff says, and honestly, I really enjoyed Hercules and Andromeda when I was a kid. So I enjoyed Hercules as a kid. Um, Andromeda was one of those shows that I, I got into more as an adult, Hello? but I was already kind of aware that Kevin Sorbo was a bit of a dick at that point. So like I could never really get past seeing the asshole on screen. I was like, yeah, it might be a good show, but that guy's a jerk and I don't like him and I don't want to see him. Andromeda for me was that show that I have never once seen, but growing up as a 90s kid, every single commercial when I was watching something on Kids WB was like some kind of commercial for Andromeda trying to get yeah. me to watch it. Yep. I remember that time period as well. Was... Like it was Andromeda and Smallville and just a bunch of stuff I never actually watched. Zerask says, uh, I wanted to fly a plane so bad I tried to join the Air Force. Turns out IBS and being legally blind make for a bad pilot. Who'd have thunk? Oh, yeah. man. I've never actually thought about that. IBS as a pilot? Yeah. That's... Yeah. That could be bad, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, that could backfire just a wee bit. Wait, I feel the same way about Star Trek Enterprise? Who on that is a dick? Is Scott Bakula horrible? Don't tell me he's horrible. He seems like such a nice guy. Like he's not he's not a great actor. Quantum Leap was fun. But um I I don't know. He seems like if you just take him based on the roles that he has played, like Quantum Leap was fairly progressive where like he would take on the role of a woman. He'd be a man playing a woman dressed up in women's clothes experiencing life as a woman experiencing how shitty it is to be a woman and it, like it fairly portrayed that as like hey you're a woman in the 70s so life sucks for you and you have to figure out how to make life better for this woman that you've leapt into <laughs> despite the patriarchy and and van bricks is saying scott bakula is a dipshit oh no am i learning bad oh, things about a guy that no. i formerly liked uh I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm terribly surprised because, like, he worked really closely with uh, what's his face, um, Dean, not Dean Kane. That was Superman. <sighs> the guy who played Al in Quantum Leap, he was he was a right wing nutbag. 
never watched it, so I don't have an opinion. It was a fun show. Uh, now I have to look it up, though. Because I don't know his name. Somebody in chat's going to say it. Dean Stockwell, that's the one. Dean Stockwell. Yeah, he was he was a dipshit. I know Dean Stockwell is a dipshit. Hey, Charles Champ saying a lot of sci-fi from that period were like the new Battle Royales trying to compete with the Fortnite that is the next generation reruns. A lot of viewers saw no reason to move from what they knew. Okay, let's get through these tweets so you can go take care of your partner. Yeah, fair uh, enough. So Sir Isaac Newton, while tagging in a bunch of completely unrelated How oh, I Twitter recognize this one. Things, um, this was in response to Apologia that like it's it's a complete non sequitur. Like whatever Apologia said was not related to this whatsoever. So like I didn't feel the need to screenshot that for context, so I don't remember what it was. But he says, Hey Apologia, are you gay or pro gay? I ask because it's becoming quite evident that atheism is a religion for the gays, for creep perverts. That's why I ask. So like sucking dicks for atheism. Gay theists unite. <laughs> <laughs> I just so I, I saw this one I, I sent it to you because it was fucking strange Van Briggs says I'm sorry if I ruined Star Trek Enterprise and Quantum Leap what? for you Vice Rhino no Star Trek Enterprise was already shit like that's that's part of like that's my whole he's not really that great of an actor like I liked him in Quantum Leap he was good in Quantum Leap but then when I saw him in Star Trek Enterprise it's like oh that's the one character he knows how to play, so he can't really do Starship Captain. So, like, no, you didn't ruin anything for me. They, like, I kind of enjoy Enterprise, but, like, as a guilty pleasure that I know is garbage. Now, this, this tweet confused me so much, because I'm trying to figure out how you get to gay from... I don't know from atheism. Well, like it's a it's a it's, hard leap. Well, it, it's it's base it's because atheism doesn't say being gay is wrong, and so a lot of atheists are very vocally being like, "Hey, Christians are dipshits for saying being gay is wrong. Just let people be attracted to who they're attracted to." And that's too much for Christians, apparently. So now they equate being it, atheist. It's gotta with being be a gay. religion for the gay. And then they now. see it as an insult. Whereas I'm like, no, you can you can think I'm gay if you want, but that's not an insult. Like, I don't care if you think I'm gay. Like, th that's not going to have an impact on my actual sexuality. Like You're just kinda you're just kinda sitting there going, like, some random person on the internet thinks that I'm gay. Like well I've I have for years said that I am straight, and I am now coming to grips with the term that I'm with, with, with the fact that I might be somewhat bi and it, it, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't change who I am. Like what the fuck ever. It doesn't matter. You're just kind of sitting there realizing things about yourself. And this guy's over in the corner yeah, panicked like, that even now, like it might make him. <laughs> it's like it, even, even now it's like, the, it's this academic thing where it's like, yeah, like, I might be bi-curious, but I'm partnered with a woman, so it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Otaku-senpai says, Shatner can be a dick for us, mostly a matter of ego. Yeah, we all knew Shat Shatner was a dick. Yep. That's not news. Ugh. Yeah, but this, this is one of the, like, finding out about Scott Bakula potentially being not great um, is one of those things where it's like, this is why I, I try to stay away from celebrity gossip. Because, like, so, so often, like, th there are a lot of actors now that when I see that actor on screen, it breaks the immersion for me. Because now I, like, I know that person has shit views in the real world. So I'm like, oh, no, that person's garbage. So, like, it doesn't matter what their character is. I know that person is garbage. And then I have to like actively work to forget that in order to enjoy whatever movie they're in. So like, mm. because that's a difficulty that I have, I actively work to avoid <laughs> learning that about various artists or whatever, or actors. So, eh, it is what it is though. Okay. Wendell says, is it under the bed? 
This is the last tweet, then you can go do like relationship <laughs> stuff with your partner. Uh, so Lilith tweeted, there's no way objective morality exists. That was a retweet. I don't know. I don't remember what. But then Wendell says, this itself is an objective claim on morality. How? Like, no, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. I'll, I'll grant that. It's an objective claim on morality. It is not a claim that morality is objective. The, like, it is objectively a claim about morality. It I was about to say, as far as you, you can only get to it is objectively a claim. Yeah. I don't think you it can is. get much further than that. Well, if, yeah, but he, they, they don't understand. Like, if one thing is objective, then all things must be objective. Mm. It's a category error. Plain and simple. But Wendell's an idiot. We, we learned that Wendell's an idiot. Yeah. And remember there was a time when I avoided Wendell, but then he was like, he, he went on Eric Hoven's thing. And it and became clear that he was a real a person. Like, yeah, no, I thought it was a Poe, but like now if it's a Poe, it's a really good Poe. Jesus Christ. So, yeah. So, yeah, I should let Cirrus go because his partner needs some loving. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks for joining us. And as always, fuck off. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Curatorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagittarius, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.